Father Thomas and welcome to Monk Works. This week is Get Woodworky Week 2015, which is put on by the Modern Woodworkers Association. The basic idea is to get people into their shop to begin to be able to make things for themselves. So let me show you how to make this plane without a lot of tools, without a lot of money, so that you can get into your garage or shop and make something that your family can cherish for generations. Let's get started. project is geared around tools that most people will already have around their home for general home maintenance. So the things that you'll need You'll also want to have something in order to clamp the wood together. Clamps are the easiest way to do that, but remember all a clamp basically is is a couple of pieces of wood and then a and then a bolt holding it together. So if you have some other way of, of doing that, you don't necessarily need to have clamps to do it, just something to be able to press wood together and hold it under tension while the glue is drying. First thing that needs to be done is to measure the offcut of your circular saw, which is the distance between the metal base and the blade itself. In my particular case, that's an inch and three eighths. And so I'm gonna add that dimension every time I make a cut with the saw. For this plane, it's going to measure three inches tall. And so I'm marking on the half inch plywood on each end, four and three eighths of an inch, keeping in mind uh, the off cut that's needed for the saw. Taking my quarter inch piece of plywood, I'm then using the factory edge and placing on each of those tick marks and then clamping it down so that I have a stable surface in order to run the circular saw across. The key to making sure that you get nice parallel cuts, make sure that you keep the base of the saw tied up against the fence you've just clamped down. Because of the dimension of the plywood that I have, I'm going to need to cut three strips of this half inch stock. Chances are you're probably going to need to cut more than one. And so it's simply a matter of removing the clamps, putting new tick marks down, reclamping, and cutting again. So we're going to need a total of six pieces of half inch stock, which measures three inches tall and 12 inches long. And then we're going to need a single piece also of 12 inches long and three inches high of the quarter inch material. Once we've cut all of our necessary strips, use your tape measure to lay out 12 inches. You only need to lay out the 12 inches on one piece. And an easy way to cut it is in a miter box. Once the first cut is complete, take that piece and lay it over for the next piece to be cut. Since our fingers tend to be quite sensitive, we can use those to help us line up the next cut. Rub your finger on the back end and you'll notice a slight ridge. Continue to reposition the wood until you no longer feel that ridge. And then on the other end, strike a line. And that's where you need to cut. And those pieces will be exactly the same length. Since we're using a two inch plane iron, we need to have a total thickness of the interior of the plane to be about, uh, to be two and an eighth inches or so. With the way that plywood is constructed, it never is the dimension in which it's being sold. So half inch plywood is actually 15 and 30 seconds inches, whereas quarter inch plywood is 7 and 30 seconds inches. So for intending to create a plane that has an interior dimension of two and an eighth inches, we need to have four pieces of half inch plywood and one piece of quarter inch plywood. Moving to laminate them all together, I like to go ahead and place a quick little mark on each of the faces that are going to receive glue because you don't need to put glue on both sides in order to get a good bond. You want to make sure you put enough glue to cover the entire surface. I often just use a piece of scrap wood or a piece of, of cardboard that I happen to have lying around to spread the glue.
I'm doing the glue up on a piece of masonite in order to use it as a reference to try to keep all the pieces as flat as possible on the bottom because the more care and attention you pay at this point the less work you're going to have to do later on. And of course once the glue is on and you've got things lined up go ahead and add the clamps. And don't just add the clamps, you need to make sure that there is no shifting that occurs while you're putting the clamps on. Because the glue, even though it's a substance that'll make things stick, until it's dried actually acts as a lubricant. So don't be afraid to use those fingers again in order to make sure that all the air is flush and to make adjustments as needed. Because the bottom or the sole of this plane is so important, we want to make sure that we get all the glue off of it. A damp rag will be great to wipe off the excess glue. Once the glue is dry, remove the clamps, and then we're ready to mark the angles necessary to make the plane work properly with its iron. Uh, the first mark will be 5 inches from the front of the plane. Using our speed square, which already has a 45 degree angle on it, we can quickly mark out where we need to cut. After you finish cutting the 45 degree angle, take the smaller piece and place it inside the miter box at the slot for the 22 and a half degree angle. And first score the line with it pressed up against the front. And then once you have the position established, go ahead and pull it back to make for easier cutting. It's now time to set the distance of the throat, which is the gap between the 45 degree angle and the 22 and a half degree angle, which on our particular plane needs to be 3 eighths of an inch. Lay each piece on its side and scribe a line marking the area that will be covered by the two blocks. Do that on both sides. It's now time for another glue up. This time though, instead of covering the entire length of the half inch strip, we only want to cover those areas on the outer side of those lines just drawn. Carefully place the interior blocks following the lines we've previously drawn. and clamp it up. Again, remember the importance of keeping the sole, the bottom part of the plane, as flat as possible. You will also want to remove any glue squeeze out on the sole of the plane or in the interior part that is now open. Because of some shifting, the 3 8 inch gap in the throat was moved slightly, so that needs to be fixed in order to allow the iron to protrude properly. It's a fairly simple fix. Using a straight edge, we mark out the area necessary to allow for 3 8 of an inch opening, and then using a small file, sand it down until it matches. The next step is the most crucial in order to have an operating plane, which is flattening the sole. If you are careful in the glue ups, it shouldn't take that long to do. I'm marking the bottom of the plane with a variety of hash marks so that I know when enough material has been taken off. Taping down a piece of sandpaper to a known flat surface, I will continue to rub the plane using even pressure across the sandpaper until all the marks are gone. When finished, you know that your plane is flat. 
The location of the cross pin is really dependent upon the dimensions of the plane at this point. It needs to be positioned in such a way so that the iron is able to slip in and then the wedge would be able to come on top of it in order to hold it in place. In order to prevent blowout for the half inch hole, make sure you use a backer board. And then do your best to make sure that when drilling, the drill remains perpendicular to the workpiece. You'll want to make sure that there's glue on both ends of the dowel that enter into the plane. Then simply tap it into place. And remember to clean up the glue squeeze out. A flush trim saw would make quick work of cleaning up the remaining piece of the dowel sticking out. But if you don't have one, you can use your crosscut saw and placing it directly up against the side of the plane, only cut with a pull motion, which will mimic the action of a flush trim saw. The final piece needed is the wedge, and it's pretty much already made. You might need to do a little bit of finessing on the sides in order to make it fit into the gap. Try to remove an equal amount of space on each side. If you weren't able to drill a perfectly perpendicular hole for the cross pin, now is a good time in order to shape it one side or the other to make sure that it fits securely and that when you're using it, the iron doesn't release. At this point, the plane is perfectly functional. You would just want to knock off some of the hard edges onto the wedge. But if you have access to a sander, you can shape it to fit the hand just a little bit better. I'll first draw on a shape and then I'll take it over to the sander to shape it out. To finish it off, remove the two ends in the miter box. You'll want to sand the entire plane except for the sole up to 220 grit. Make sure that you round over the corners once again except for those that are adjacent to the sole of the plane. If you do accidentally sand the bottom of the plane, don't worry too much about it. You just need to go back and repeat the flattening process again. Before applying the finish, I like to go over the whole project with a little bit of denatured alcohol. That helps to get rid of all of the sanding dust so that it doesn't mess up the finish. On this plane, I will be applying boiled linseed oil. If you don't have that particular oil, it's not that big of a deal. The key thing is you want something that is a penetrating finish. You do not want anything that would build up layers onto the outside of the wood because those layers can have slight imperfections in them that might cause the plane to no longer be flat. So pretty much any type of oil is going to work just fine here. When working with oils, I like on the first coat to absolutely flood it with as much oil as it will take. In the second and third coats, I'll put it on, wait about 15 or 20 minutes, and then wipe off anything that has not yet penetrated into the wood itself. After the final coat, give it a good 24 hours to fully cure, and you've got yourself a working plank.
not that difficult to make a hand plank. So why don't you consider taking up the challenge, get into your shop or garage, and get woodworking. And if you already are a woodworker, take someone out there with you to kind of share the joy and, and fun and excitement that you have from woodworking as well. So thanks for watching, and may God bless you. Thank <laughs> you.